So I went on a nine day road trip to visit the best and most affordable rental markets around the US. Today's the first stop and we're gonna show you Scranton, Pennsylvania. Upon my initial research, here's what I expected from Scranton. For crime, it was one of the better ones on the list, but there was a weird large spike in the last year, so I was a little concerned about that. The unemployment rate was 7.7% as of November 2020, which was a little bit higher than most other cities on the list. The population growth was negative 0.75%, which means it didn't really gain anyone, but it also didn't really lose anyone since 2000. Now, one of my favorite parts was the average home price. It was $116,000, which within two hours in New York City is a steal. And because of that, it also had a really good price to rent ratio, which meant that it actually had a good chance of cash flowing. The property taxes were not super high either, which was good for cash flow. But looking at the map, it wasn't in a landlord friendly state. So after doing all this research, I called a few investors that I met and networked with on Bigger Pockets, and they told me what areas to really focus on. They said the west side was an area you're gonna wanna stay away from. The north side didn't have really much going for it. The south side was improving and gentrifying and the east side was the best spot in town. Knowing that we got in the car and head off to Scranton. All right it's 5.05 in the morning. We're heading to Scranton right now. After two hours in the car from here and a nice charge we got to Scranton PA. We went straight to Slate House Management Group to meet with Quay who is head of property management for Slate House. She's also an investor and an agent so she was a really good resource for us to connect with. We first interviewed her to see what she had thought about the real estate market in Scranton. So for someone who's never been on the ground here what areas of Scranton or nearby surrounding areas would you recommend? Stay? Well school district is actually one of the reasons why a lot of people do move Move here. Abington Heights School District is probably the number one, followed by North Pocono, Valley View. These are like elementary, middle school, mm -hmm. and okay, high school. Scranton really does have a good program for students here. Scranton's actually divided into subsections. It's like North Scranton, South, East Mountain, Green Ridge, and the Hill section. I think the most desired part of Scranton right now is the Hill and the Green Ridge section. Okay, and those are the best for schools, and you think that those areas are growing the best right now? Well, the or Hill they're... section and Green Ridge have been the best property producing because their rents are a little higher and they're a little more desired I guess mm -hmm. from tenants moving in mm -hmm. and owners actually you know because right now it's coming on on college season because Green Ridge and Hill section are so close to schools it's the University of Scranton Marywood the medical school um, we're getting a lot of phone calls now getting generated for the fall semester there's a little mix of different mm -hmm. things happening yeah. what are the economic drivers behind the town like you mentioned that there's the schools what are the big jobs in the area or they're like is there an Amazon factory nearby like what oh what's yes. the reason that people would live in Scranton other than schools yeah they're starting to open up more businesses Amazon there's one in Goldsboro literally like 20 25 minutes away I know Chewy is a big um, hiring facility too they like the dog food yeah company. Okay. yeah the online <laughs> I was like I've heard of that name before, but... <laughs> there they have one in Wilkesbury and actually they're opening one up in Jessup there's the power plant in Jessup right now the hospitals are a big employer around here where's the best place for someone to contact you I always have my phone on me next thing after this is we're gonna go take a look at some properties and we're gonna learn a little bit about the property management packages other than that we'll see you all later bye bye so after all that Vladi, who was actually helping me drive on the trip, actually got to go see a live eviction happening in Scranton with another investor. After that, we actually got to go see our own properties. Here we go. The first property we saw was a duplex. It was asking $131,500. One side was a two bed, one and a half bath that was rented for $725, that was 1,220 square feet. And the second side was a two bed, one bath, 1,188 square feet that was rented for $925. It was a solid property that beat the 1% rule and cash flowed on day one, which actually seemed to be the case for almost all the properties we saw in Scranton. The second property was actually a three unit that had a storefront in the bottom. It was asking for 89,900. The first floor was a two bed, one bath rented for 700 a month. The second floor was a three bed, one bath rented for 1,100 a month. And the storefront was rented for 250 a month, which seemed a little under market. And the upstairs seemed a little over market. With this one, we couldn't get in unfortunately, but if I had to tell you, it seemed like a good deal right from the start. The third property was a duplex asking 83,500. Both units were two bed, one 
one bath that rented for $525 and $650 each. It would have cash flowed, but it would have needed a little bit of work. It was a little outdated. The last property was another duplex on a really nice street that was asking $129.9. Each unit was a two bed, one bath up and down that actually had some good updates to it. And then we got a bonus flip that Quay did herself that was actually really good. After that, we said goodbye to Quay and headed over to our next spot, which I'll reveal at the end, but let's talk about how I felt about Scranton first. In my opinion, it's a great town to invest for cash flow. Not too much appreciation, but cash flow is there 100%. All of these properties were on the MLS and cash flowing day one. As someone who's been from New York City and New Jersey my entire life, it was great to see that within a two hour drive or so, you can get to an area that has properties under 100,000, no problem in a not high crime area that are really good. And it turns out that the city really backs landlords with the laws. Here's what Quay had to say about some final words about investing in Scranton. So do you recommend Scranton as a good place to start for someone who has never been here before, who has a lot of options Absolutely. in terms of where? Why would you recommend Scranton? We're getting a lot of investors now from New York, New Jersey, just because of the price point. <laughs> <laughs> <Hello>. <laughs> Single family home, you can buy them as cheap as seventy five thousand dollars for That's a crazy. duplex, a hundred to hundred and twenty. We're just talking about Austin. Yeah, the, the median home price in Austin is four fifty. Well, when I first invested, I was only buying twenty to twenty five thousand for single family homes, and okay. then renting them out. So you're an investor as well, then? I am. Yes. Okay. How many units do you own? Right around ten is really the number that I used to hover around. So you live and invest here, then? I do. Yes. And That's kind of where I started. I had to learn oh, the okay. ins and outs first. It was a side hustle at first. Uh, okay, okay. I highly recommend Scranton. It was a great spot. I'm gonna be looking at properties there myself. Our next spot was Akron, Ohio. Make sure to click the subscribe button so you don't miss out on the next one.